All right. Hello, and welcome to our session, Leveraging Tableau and R for Understanding Promotional Effectiveness and Pricing Analytics. My name is Alan Dyson, Lead Analyst at Home Depot Quote Center. My name is Ben Daniel. I'm a CRM Analytics Manager. So what's in it for you? Because you all want to come away with something. So I'm going to explain to you how you can easily build dynamic parameters to be able to enhance your analysis. Really easy stuff. And I'm going to demonstrate promotion analysis, showing you a simple technique for gaining greater insight from your sales. So we're going to hear from Ben in a little bit. I'm going to kick things off. And we'll have some time at the end for questions and answers. So a little bit about me. So I've been in financial analyst space for about 10 plus years. I've worked in private equity, financial services, and most recently, consumer retails. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of experience with retail strategies, forecasting, budgeting. Uh, in Excel for the on Tableau for the past couple of years. Been using it for a couple of years now. With Home Depot Quote Center in Portland, Oregon area for the past couple of years, and we are hiring like crazy, so check us out. It's a great company. So what is Quote Center, right? So when you think about Home Depot, there's three primary business lines. The first one I'm going to talk about is stock. So how many of you have ever been into a Home Depot store and bought something? That's what I thought. OK, keep going. Like, keep buying stuff there. <laughs> so that's our stock business there. Um, .com, it's going to be anything you get online. Right? So those are two primary business lines right there. So special order, this is really where Quote Center comes into play. So you think about a, a contractor who comes into a store, needs to buy materials to build three, five, ten homes. You can't get all those materials in the store or on .com. So they go into a store into an area called the Pro Desk. And they're going to talk to the person in the orange, orange apron that's an associate. And they're going to say, hey, I need all these materials. And so what Quote Center has really done since coming on in 2013 has automated that ordering process for all these really large, high dollar orders. So Quote Center is the tool that associates will use to help customers order these large dollar um, quotes. And so we also facilitate stock transactions as well. So what is special order explained a little bit more? It's going to be large dollar transactions. We're talking building materials like plywood, lumber, roofing materials. The main customer segment is going to be pro contractors. That's really the niche that we're going after. And third party distributors have to be utilized quite a bit because a lot of these contractors, they don't have, um, they have their pickup trucks maybe, so they can't get all these materials to the job site. So we have to leverage third party distributors. And what's the opportunity there? It's in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, residential renovators and remodelers, different trades like plumbers and electricians, and then maintenance and repair services is a pretty big opportunity as well. So there's a lot of meat on the bone here, and that's what we're trying to attack. So what's this special order workflow that we talked about a little bit earlier? So this is an associate. This is the person in the store you've probably all seen if you've been in a Home Depot. So the old workflow for these large dollar orders was if a contractor goes in and said, I need all these building materials, this person's going to have to call all these suppliers, the local suppliers. They're going to flip through these paper catalogs for pricing. Very cumbersome process. So a lot of business was lost simply because the workflow was really inefficient. So countless phone calls, stale pricing, not efficient at all. So when Quote Center came into play, it's all automated. So all these suppliers and manufacturers, they're putting all their costs in the back end so now a contractor can go into a store any time of day, and this associate can log into Quote Center and give them real-time pricing and product availability. So we have product search, marketing, product information. We're really, really emphasizing the right product at the right price with the right placement. That's what we're focused on. So how does pricing work? So I'm on the retail strategy team, and we spin up all of these different strategies. Well, we have a pretty awesome... Uh, back-end system where we can create pricing programs. So it's really incentivizing buy more, buy more, save more. So looking at thresholds. So if somebody wants to buy $10,000 or more of a product, we want, we want to capture that sale, much more than somebody who comes in and is buying $100 here and there. So we have this awesome system that we use. We can mix and match products. It's very dynamic in nature. So this is kind of the core of what we'll use to analyze the data in Tableau spin up these programs. So I know you're all here for Tableau, right? You don't want to hear about Quote Center all day. So how do we, how do we leverage Tableau? 
well, like I talked about in the workflow, it used to be like um, they'd write down on pieces of paper, like, oh, here's the building materials list, right? So there was no data behind it. But so now everything that's coming through Quote Center, we have all of that data, right? These are all rich data points. So we not only have the demand data of somebody comes in and says, I want to buy all this, and maybe I only actually buy half of it. We have, we have the entire list of that data. So we take that. We come up with a, a hypothesis within our process. So we'll say, uh, roofing orders over $20,000, we're just not priced competitively at all. So we need to put a pricing program in place, and we're going to go to some top markets or cities, and we're going to roll something out with that discounting engine I showed you. And so we'll do that, and if it's successful, we may scale it. If it's not, we'll pivot, and then we'll scale from there. But this whole process, this iterative process, wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to do it without Tableau. So that's really where Tableau comes into the picture. So our first business problem, how can we grow sales on these large dollar orders, right? So we have to define what is a large order, right? How many of you have been in Excel and run these kind of if statements before? Okay. Well, this is what I feel like when I'm doing this. <laughs> It's not fun. So Excel is great for proving things out and ad hoc analysis, but when you want to automate uh, your analysis, it's, it's not the best place to do it. Not easily scaled. So in Tableau, we can create dynamic tiers, right? So these are all parameter-driven tiers. So this is a common graph that we'll look at. You see, over on the right, that's the high dollar quotes that we're talking about that we really need to capture. And this line is the percent, of time, the percent of the time that we sell that. So you can see there's a missed opportunity on that right-hand side. So if you were to spin this up in Excel, you might forget to add in city or uh, region or things like that. And you're going to have to recreate the wheel and run that analysis all over again. But in Tableau, we can do it quickly and efficiently and, and scale it really fast. So I'm going to show you how simple this is. Hopefully some of you have some basic understanding of some parameters and calculated fields. It's just really tying all of that together. And so step one, all we're gonna do is create parameters here. We're gonna create the shell that we're gonna wanna be able to, to input and flex in the system. So if we want five tiers, you're saying, why, why are we only creating four of them? Because the calculated field that we'll create will actually, will actually create that first tier for us. So we don't need that. So, Tier two really, or tier one really should be tier two. I mean, you can call them whatever you want. But this is kind of how, how you set the table, right? So we have five tiers that we need. We create four parameters. Then we're gonna create another parameter, and we wanna be able to flex based on quantity or dollars, right? We can add a lot more values to that if we need to. Uh, but let's just try quantity and dollars. So you're gonna create another parameter here and I'll call this our value toggle, because we want to be able to toggle between values. And then you're just going to create a calculated field, the case statement, and you're going to say when quantity is quantity, then give me quantity. When, when it's dollars, give me quoted dollars. So you're putting those values into that parameter, and you're making it come alive. And so here's what you should have kind of at the end of that. You have this nice, neat toggle. So then you're going to create a calculated field, and this is kind of where the rubber hits the road. So you've got your tier inputs that you created. So those are those four that we started with. And you've got your value toggle, okay? So what you really want to end up with on a view is you want to end up with this kind of neat view on the bottom here. And again, this is dynamic, so you can change this at will. So this is the calculated field that we'll use. We'll say if quantity, let's say we're starting with quantity for this value, if it's greater than tier four, so whatever you input in tier four, that 125, then call it greater than tier four, right? So it's just a, lot of, a little bit of formatting, but you're just building out a basic logic statement to be able to tie all this together. And so one, one trick that we learned with this, it's kind of a hack, um, putting numbers in before each of these, it keeps them sorted neatly, so when you're, when you're toggling between different tiers, they can get out of order if, well, this was just a hack that we found that worked, so there's probably another way to do it. So, this is really kind of the meat of it. And now you can throw it into views. So once you've built out that framework, then you can start to really apply it. So you see there's our calculation that we just built, the tier thresholds. So you throw that into columns, throw a couple of measures on rows, and then you can see over to the left there you have your toggle. So you can toggle between quantity and dollars. 
And you also have the inputs, so you can change all of those inputs at will, and it's real time. You can also add values on the bars, and uh, you can add those on labels there just to add a little more content there. But this, again, this is the graph that we've been looking at before, is where is that opportunity and how can we go attack it? We're not going after the small guy, we're going after the big one. So then you can take these views and then you can put them into dashboards. So having these parameters makes it really easy for anyone, so you don't have to be an expert in the data, you don't have to be afraid of it. I think that's, that's the biggest thing that I want to get across to you, is you try this stuff and you can't really fail with Tableau, unless you're working on somebody else's workbook. Um, <laughs> that's happened a couple of times. But you, you can't fail, you just gotta try this stuff, YouTube, user groups, there's a, there's a lot of information out there. But so then you can throw it into a dashboard here and you can have anybody use it and identify some of these opportunities that you maybe are missing out on because you're not able to quickly and easily analyze it. So our first goal was really to identify the opportunities with Tableau. And so that's what we've done here. So now I'm gonna talk about, well, we've identified those opportunities. We roll out a pricing program with that that system that I showed you before. So now how can we just easily measure results, right? Ben's gonna talk about R. I'm not talking about R. I'm just talking about some base, getting some basic sound bites. Is something working, is something not? So this is how we'll typically look at it um, at first blush. We'll say, let's look at pre-post, right? Because a lot of the programs we're rolling out, they have a definitive point in time. Sometimes we'll iterate over them, but most of the time we'll just draw a line in the sand and say, this is when it's starting. So pre versus post, we'll say. This is good for like run rates. Um, if there's not a lot of volatility or seasonality, uh, we can look at a clean pre six weeks, post six weeks view. And then post versus post, this is really just like a comp versus last year. So we work with a lot of product merchants and they're always asking the question, well, how am I doing versus last year? That's really what I wanna know. So this just gives you different slices to be able to look at performance. It's useful for retail strategies, promo events, short-term, three, six-week promo events, marketing blasts, any, really any kind of event that has a point in time. And so again, this is even easier than the last one. You're gonna create a parameter here. So you're gonna say, this is my fiscal week input. So again, this is just gonna be on your views and you can change this at will. So we have, I don't know, we have probably 20 core programs that we've rolled out thus far, and that's been scaled really easily because of Tableau. So having these inputs, it's like, okay, I'm gonna look at this product group and this program, I'm gonna, and you can just go into the fiscal week and say that started in six, or this started in eight. So it's really easy to toggle around. You don't have to have a whole mess of data. So you're gonna create a calculated field. So this is just a simple if-then statement. So if fiscal week on your view is less than, shouldn't be equal, just less than fiscal week input, then call it pre, else post, that's it. So then the fun part, then you start to throw it into some views. Again, you're setting the table and then you're able to utilize it and scale it. So then you can throw that calculation into columns and what you're seeing here is a clean six week pre, six week post based on a test. And notice that the, you have the tiers on the far left there. That's what we built out in the previous example. So now you have those dynamic tiers which you can change and then you have this pre-post which you can change. So between those two, we can look at most of the programs that we've rolled out. And say, oh, I wanna get a sound bite from this, right? Like this is still, this is too much noise. I don't wanna have to calc this out in Excel or a calculator. Well, you can just take the weeks off and it's a nice clean pre-post here and you can see where is it working, where is it not. So then you can say, I'm gonna hone in on orders from 1,500 to $3,000. I wanna know how am I performing pre-six weeks versus post-six weeks. You say, well, post versus post, year over year, we're up 120%. But pre versus post, the kind of run rate, we're up 56% versus 20%. So this is evidence for us, okay, in that, that bucket right there, something's working, let's dig into that further. So you can also use pre post in a couple of different applications. You just saw it there in heat maps. Here's just another example here. So scrub the data, we got some apples and bananas, we got a really good deal on those. Um, so you can see colors can really bring to life performance. So you can see here after we rolled out a program on apples and bananas, uh, we're having some significant lift in that category. 
then line graphs here. So this is really good for like, um, we call them markets or city, city by city comparisons. If we rolled out a test in LA uh, versus Dallas or Phoenix, we can see a good test versus control with, uh, with this as well. So again, you have the pre and the post there, but you can change your views dynamically. This is one of our favorite ones. So this goes back to the original graph that I was showing you. Um, this is showing the, the order size. So it's higher dollars over towards the right. This is quote count. So it looks larger on the left, but the actual real dollars are on the right. And this is the, the percent of time that we sell it. So what we're really looking at here is we want to see lift. We want to see lift in the percent of time that we're selling these quotes. And so that's what we begin to see here, is this is the same time period, year over year, the one to the right had a program, the one to the left didn't. So this is really what we're measuring. And again, a lot of this is from the rich data that we're getting from this system that we never had before. This is more of like a KPI table. So this is kind of where the rubber hits the road in terms of is something working, is it not? So we've got multiple measures here versus one or two on these past couple of ones that I showed you. And so this is where we can look at, we can look at our quoted dollars. Are we getting lift in certain tiers? Are we driving sales? Are we driving margin dollars? Yes, yes, and yes. We're, this, in this example, we're doing really well. But it gives you that dynamic ability to look at, now the pre and post is kind of fixed on this, but you can, again, change those tiers dynamically and see where's the sweet spot in the business? Where do I want to go after it? And if you want to get a little tricky, uh, calculating variances is, isn't, terribly fun in Tableau, but you can just create another view and have that calced out. Um, and then you have a nice and neat little view here you can throw into, throw into a PowerPoint or have some good sound bites on. So in this example, we're driving sales 85%, margins up 35%. We're doing really well. This is working. So now we've measured performance, right? Well, what does that lead us to? What, what are we going to do with that? We're going to scale. Tableau has made it ridiculously easy for us to scale these strategies. And we're going to do it with Tableau. So now Ben is going to talk to you about prom uh, promotional analytics. So Ben, take it away. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to say what an honor and pleasure it is to be here at Tableau Conference 2017 and to have the opportunity to tell the story. My name is Ben Daniel, and I joined the Home Depot four years ago as part of the pricing team where I led the development rollout of pricing applications. And that's where I really got my start with Tableau. I was building reports on top of the application. Since then, I moved into more of a data science role in the CRM analytics team in marketing, where I work on data science projects to better understand and serve our customers. But enough about me. Let's talk about something cool that we did with Tableau and R. So merchants manage the business of our various product categories at Home Depot, and they are buried in sales and promotional data. With all the SKUs, stores, and promotions, many of them running at the same time, it's easy to see why they get overwhelmed. And perhaps you've been into some of our stores and seen some of our promotions, and they're complex to manage. You may have seen new lower price, holiday and event-related ads, and even our everyday low prices. But ultimately, we want to know one thing. How do they relate back to sales? So let's look at the business problem that we faced that came up last summer. The chemicals merchant ran several promotions over the past two years. And when I'm talking chemicals, I'm thinking things like, such as uh, Roundup herbicides or uh, Raid or Hotshot insect control, so those, those types of products. And what he wanted to know were what were the relative impacts of his promotions over time and which ones were more effective. And he wanted to use that insight to refine his promotional campaigns. So as we approached this problem, the first thing we realized is that we did have some data issues in determining what was the right source of data to use and do this promotional analysis. So there were challenges in using total dollars because price changes can alter revenue up and down. So that presented noise. Using total units was also a challenge because Home Depot doesn't stock everything at the same levels in the store. And also big selling items can overshadow niche products. So there's noise in that data too. Another challenge that we had is that this was a big data project 
because of all the permutations of stores and we were at the, a day level. It was just, it was too big for Excel and doing a project like this, because of the cha its changing nature, we knew that formulas could get very messy. So we didn't want to deal with a bunch of VLOOKUPs. It just wasn't going to scale easily. So we decided to use Tableau. So let's look at our solution. This is how the data looked like whenever we started. So the shape it was in was we started with sales data. It was very granular. So we had a SKU, a market, a sale date, the amount, and number of units. Okay, so we know what was sold, where it was sold, when, and how much, and how many. The promo data was in a range. So we had SKU, market, the promotion, what, under what promotional strategy it was being sold, and then a start and end date. So the first task we had to do was we had to get the data in the right shape to analyze. So we did a cross-join to get the data at the SKU market level, sale date, promotional market level. So now I know what was sold, where it was sold, when it was sold, and under what promotional strategy. And this type of data would allow me to know what was being sold when it was on sale and when it was not on sale. So now the data was in the right shape. And once the data is in the right shape, you can produce a graph like this, produced in Tableau. And this is total units. So each, uh, each point, each day running along the x-axis, each bar is a day, one day sale for a particular subclass of products. And each color of the bar represents its promotional strategy. So orange and purple are two different promotions, and then blue means no promotion. Okay, so this, this gives me a feel for how, how the promotions are doing, but can anyone point out why this might not be the best graph to view relative performance? Can anyone spot it? Say again? Seasonality? You know, it, seasonality it is an important factor when looking at promotions and, and, and determining causality, but the real issue here is that the baseline for this graph is zero. And Home Depot rarely sells zero of anything. So statistics provides us a way to rebaseline this, this information and provide a better relative score and a relative feel of what's happening. So what we'll do is we're gonna rebaseline this so that zero is no longer zero. Zero is the average. And then we measure the height of the bars or the, the distance away from agile will be measured in standard deviations. So this produces a z-score. I'm, br I'm bringing back painful memories of statistics classes, right? Yeah, okay. So, but, but it's very useful because what this is doing is it lets me see the impact of the promotion while tamping down the noise of the data in the actual total units. Remember, the further I get away from zero, especially as I approach two standard deviations away, it tells me that something significant is going on. It's not just by chance. So now I've got a graph with both positive and negative values. It's much better for, for getting a relative performance a demand. Now before I, by the way, show of hands, how many people are familiar with R here, have used this? Awesome, okay, I'm in the right crowd, okay. So I just wanted to show briefly that this could have been done in R, okay? So if you look at my code here, uh, the first line is reading in the data, the second line I'm filtering to a specific subclass and market, I filter down to a certain time range. And then if you look at that next line where I have the bolded text where it says total scaled units, the scale function, that's the workhorse that's actually rebaselining the numbers and transforming them into z-scores. And then ggplot is gonna create the, the pretty graph that I've got there. Now this is useful, but the thing, with this, the thing with this type of approach is that whenever we're working with merchants, you know, a lot of times they wanna change the way they see the data. And if they want to change the way they see the data, then we, and we do this, then we have to change code. So it's just, it just doesn't iterate as fast. So this is great. I mean, I can call scale and rebaseline these numbers, but how do I get the best of both worlds? How could I use the stats capability of R, but have the visualization capability of Tableau? And that's where we combine them together. And the first thing we have to do to get the best of both worlds if you're gonna run this on your own machine, you need to get R. And I, I'm, I'm probably gonna go through this a little fast since it seems like folks are familiar with R here. But if you've never run R as a server, once you have R on your local machine, 
you next need to create a script that will start R as a server. So then it's under step two where you have library R serve, and then you call the R serve function. That's what's going to start R as a server. Step three, you're going to go out and create a script file, uh, a command script file, and uh, point to the uh, directory of rscript.exe on your machine and then pass it the path to start r.r. Okay, that's a bit of a mouthful, but once you double click that, uh, that file, it's gonna start a Windows command window like you see there in the bottom right, and you will know that r is up and listening for commands. Now, if, you're, if your IT group has an R server running on the network, you can just point to their IP address. This step is not necessary. But if you're going to run on your own machine, you have to do this. OK, the next step is you've got to get Tableau talking to R. So you'll go into Help, Settings and Performance, Manage External Service Connection, and there you will put the address and port for your R server. So in my case, on my own machine, it was localhost port 6311. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a calculated field. So that, remember the, the shape of the data? Once we have the data in the right shape, plug it into Tableau, and then we're going, to create a, we're going to create a calculated field using this formula, the script real function. And that, that line right there, that is the R code. So in comp with an arrow and the scale function, remember, that's the workhorse. And you're passing it dot R1, okay? That argument, is being fed by the sum of total sales units. So it's going to get passed into R. R is going to rebaseline and then pass the data back into Tableau, and Tableau is going to visualize it. Okay. Now there are some caveats about using this type of function that I'm going to address in a, in a couple slides. But notice, most noticeably is that if you're going to use the script real function, you have to pass in aggregate data. So level of detail. At this point, level of detail, detail calculations can't be used inside the script function. You'll see why it's important in just a minute. OK, so here is an example of a rebase line promotional time series. OK, each one of those lines represents a different promotional strategy. I was able to easily create year over year by dragging the year into the, into the rows shelf. And I can see how my various promotions are, are running, so the orange and brown are two promotions, and then the orange, uh, so I'm sorry, red and brown are two promotions, and orange means no promotion at all. This gives me a really good feel for the relative demand, and Tableau made it easy to do a year-over-year -year comparison. In this, in this particular example, I wanted to show what, it, what the graph would look like using total units. And what I've done is I've not only put in the lines showing the, each individual promotion, but Tableau lets me add a second axis, and I added in the, these gray bars that show the total, bis, total units of a particular subclass overall. So I can see the promotions as well as the context of the total business. And you know, especially if I draw your attention to that bottom graph, you might look at this and say, why would I ever run a promotion on this? It looks like I did much better just later in the season. Well, look at the data differently. If you notice there are my promotions, I can see I have a much better feel for how the two promotions were running side by side. In addition, if you look at the end, see how there's, there's the orange line is upticking. I did not, we didn't hit the same amount of relative demand until Memorial Day. Okay? So, you know, looking at total units, it looks like Memorial Day outpaces the, the, uh, the time period runner in my promotion, whereas actually the promotion was doing better than it appeared. I want you to look at the bottom graph and tell me which promo do you think is, is making the bigger difference. You might not be able to see it, but there are actually two promotions there running at the same time. There's a pink line and an orange line, and they're practically right on top of one another. Those two promotions are driving the same amount of relative demand. Okay? So if a merchant is looking at this and trying to refine his promotional strategy, those two promotions may not cost the same. One might be more expensive than the other. So if he were to just run the cheaper promotion, he could save money, as well as but still achieve the same amount of relative demand. Notice also that the, the top of the peaks, okay? Remember I was saying that the, the peaks represent where you're well above average. Those are our weekends, 
because most of our customers are coming in during a Friday or Saturday, notice that the peaks are about the same, so same height as when we're not on sale later in, later in, the, uh, in the season where I just have the blue line running. I could be promoting unnecessarily. So the caveat that I mentioned was that I couldn't use level of detail. And if you're looking at a graph like I've shown here, it's, it's very insightful. But you know what the, the problem is, is that it's like looking at a movie one frame at a time. And as we've, we've heard from other lectures at the conference today, you've got to give the emergency the ability not only a microscope, but you've got to give them a telescope to be able to zoom out and see from a 10,000 foot level. Now, to roll up and to do the right analytics, I would need a level of detail expression. And I'll admit, I came here and sat down with a Tableau doctor yesterday, and they showed me a technique, not using the calculation in R, actually doing the calculation in a field in Tableau to actually roll and pivot up. And I, I just want to say, I think that's really the value of coming to a conference like this, because you can actually sit with the experts and, uh, and, and, and find out alternate solutions to problems you're trying to solve. But that being said, and credit, you know, credit being given, I want to show you the workaround that I found to give the merchant a 10,000 foot view. So what we did is our, we pre-calculated, used R and ran, it in, ran an R script that, that ran over a couple hours overnight and pre-calculated the results and saved them down to a CSV file. We could then plug in later into that CSV, CSV file and now I'm looking at one subclass rather than a time series over one market. Now I'm looking at all of the markets at the same time. And by using the heat map, I can show where the darker colors means you're more effective. So I have no promotion in the first column and promotion number two in the second column. So where the color is darker, that means the promotion's being more effective. If I, sort, if I uh, write a scoring formula and put that as the value that's going, into the promote, that's going into the cell, then I can sort these promotions effectively and now I can start to budget and prioritize the markets where I'm gonna promote. I could also lay that out on a map and this is really great for change management and trying to sell your idea that you're going to, that you're going to be smarter and choosier about where you're going to promote. You can lay that on a map and see them at, uh, at, a, at a, a more intuitive geographic level. And whenever you see this, you, know, you might say, wow, this is a call to action. Look at Florida. I'm, you know, we're, we're really just not that effective for this particular subclass of products. I'm just not getting the bang for the buck that I'm investing in Florida. Right? And you might say, well, that's our call to action. I see it as a call to experimentation. A call to experimentation. Don't just say, okay, stop promoting in Florida, right? Pick your stores, pick your battles, and do, do a, a controlled experiment and verify your, and, and validate and verify your assumptions. But again, this type of map, rather than, say, than intuitively or by your gut saying, hey, I'm gonna pick some markets here and there and see what happens, this will let me say, hey, are there places where I can Learn without jeopardizing the business. So let's talk about the insights and impact that we had. First of all, we've seen that comparing promotions on an even basis allows for better understanding. And that through this simple, powerful technique, we can connect Tableau and R, and it allows me to extend the power of the visualization tool. And there's advantage in nimble, responsive visualizations that allow me to get, a, get answers to a merchant quickly, and it eases change management. Our merchants, our users, they have to live in these reports. And if we're making their life easier, we're making our lives easier. The impact of this is that we got answers, in, truly insightful answers to our merchant in much less time than if he had to fold and, and analyze the data in Excel by himself. And the tool ultimately allowed the merchant to refine his promotional strategy. And again, the, the, the message that I would like to leave this crowd with is that as we develop our Tableau dashboards and we get these powerful insights, they're not only calls to action, but they're calls to experimentations. Don't go all in, make a small calculated bets. Thank you very much and enjoy your time at the conference. And thank you. So, so what, what we'd like to ask is to please, please, before you leave the session, please go to the, uh, the survey app, uh, the, the survey found in the uh, Tableau conference app. And I'm going to invite Alan back up to the stage, and we're going to go through some Q&A. Thank you.
So I think there's some mics that are coming around. Yeah, we some, have some mic stands here in mics. the middle. So if you've got questions. Good, uh, just go to the microphone, yep. So uh, in your experiment here, uh, so what, first of all, what we're trying to do is we're trying to connect Tableau to R as well. Okay. But we are doing it for the purpose of uh, machine learning, so models, sure. uh, complicated models. Mm -hmm. um, in your experiment, uh, when you connect Tableau and R in this way, how does it impact R's performance in terms of running so statistical models? That's a, that's a very good question. I think that what you have to do is you have to know like what type of, well, first of all, what type of hardware you're running on, how much memory and resources that you have. There are configuration files. In fact, I was pointed to a blog. Uh, it's uh, Bora. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, from, I'm familiar with, I can't remember his full name, but Bora's, if you look for Bora's blog on uh, R and Tableau configuration, you can actually go to the config file in R, and if you need to, to preload data or preload libraries, that can help you uh, improve performance because you won't be reloading the same libraries every time you make a call out to R. Did that help? Got it. Um, uh, what about in terms of, uh, have you done any testing in terms of uh, performance as uh, opposed to, for example, if you were to run it through Tableau versus running it in pure R? Mm -hmm. I have not had a chance to do the level of detail calculation, so, uh, Essentially, what, what you would have to do is you would have to take a window and calculate the average, you know, take each point, subtract the average, divide by standard deviation, and that would let you roll up. I haven't had a chance to do that because I was mostly, the, the question for, my, for me at the time of the project was how does this look over time? So R was just the, the quickest way to get there. Okay, thanks. Yep. So I have a question about R. Did you guys publish that dashboard to a server? And if so, how did the R server work when you published it? I, we did not publish the R to the, we didn't publish the Tableau server. Uh, we had packaged up and our, one of our analysts worked with the, the merchant directly. Okay, thank you. Yep. So once you decide that you need a promotion, how do you actually set the promotion, how much of a discount it is, you know? Well, there, I mean, certainly there's value in doing uh, response modeling in that. Many times it's just easier to stay with a round number because you want, the, ultimately, you want the discount to make sense to, uh, to the customer. And it varies between the type of promotions we run uh, for consumers versus the type of promotion you would run. Like something could be much more granular. Maybe you might want to speak mm -hmm. to that, Alan, about how you choose the promotion settings for uh, mm -hmm. business to business. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a blend of what, what's going what's to be uh, material for the customer, what's going to actually get them in the door, versus what are our sales and margin goals, right? So it's from, from our side in special order, we, we are starting to, to step into that promotional space. But it's a blend. If, if the discount's not enough for the customer, then the promotion's not going to work. Um, but we're always balancing that. What, what's the customer need with what are our margin goals? We don't want to lose our shirts on margin. Do you use any modeling to actually get to that decision? Um, nothing related to R. Uh, it's more, it's just heavy financial modeling, pretty much, yeah. And we'll do as much as we can in Tableau. And then if we have to pull something in Excel, then we'll do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, I got a question kind of like regarding to the data preparation stage. So you just briefly mentioned that you need to pay with the data. So actually, mm -hmm. For, for your data, for the aggregation analysis, whether in Tableau or R, it's really hard for uh, bad data quality. You need to do a lot like data cleaning, data checking, especially yeah. like you got so many stores, so, mm -hmm. so, so long history of data. So I was wondering like, what is the challenge for you guys in the process and what's the solution you come with, please? Sure, so I th just want to, so your question is about pivoting the data and getting it in the right shape for analysis, is that right? Uh, yeah, quality? also cleaning, 
Yeah. Right. So, you know, I, you know what? This morning's keynote, I was the, the one thing that really, per, you know, piqued my interest was Maestro, because I think that would make my day, my job, so much easier. I mean, I spent days pulling the data and then folding and then writing the scripts. And by, actually, I wrote the scripts in R using dplyr to get everything in the right shape and aligned, and then also making sure that you know, and making sure that I had everything correct before I actually plugged in Tableau. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I used R. I didn't even start with Tableau in the data. I knew I had to get in the right shape first. So I was, I was a lot in R in, at the beginning. Yeah. Yep. Hi. Thank Hi. you very much for the speak. You're welcome. So my question is, seasonality is a big issue in terms of the promotion price strategy, all of mm -hmm. that. So I wonder how do you deal with the seasonality, especially right. for some promotion activities that yeah. happened in the peak season and some promotion activity happened yeah. in the week uh, Absolutely, yeah. sure. You know what, I think that while in this case, in, in this case I didn't, I, I didn't go there, yeah. but I think that some, an important part to realize is that maybe a holiday could be considered like its own promotion, even if you weren't running a promotion at that time. And while this was using the scale function, I can easily see where if you're running regression, linear regression, and you've got that, maybe not necessarily visualized in Tableau, but if you were running regression and pulling coefficients back, you would be able to see those periods if you define that, you know what, this date range, Memorial Day, even though I don't have it on sale, it is its own promotion, you would be able to, to attach more causality, more correlation to that time period, and thus you could attribute its effect to your overall promotion lift. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. This was a really great session. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions I have is, um, have you faced challenges with promotions that run for a very wide span of time and that sort of becomes your regular price and it's no longer a promotion? Right. And how have you dealt with situations like that? So it's, a, it's kind of the, it's the problem where you have You've promoted all the time, mm -hmm. and essentially you have nothing, no control group. You know that I think that this is a, something, a philosophy we should all carry back to our to our jobs, right? Is that information is like an asset, and it's often not free. Assets we have to pay for them, we have to invest in them. So a lot of, again, it's like looking at places where you think, you know what, we're going to do a test, and we're going to, to, to run a few tests and select products and change the price, stop promoting something for a while and recognize that as an investment and see what the difference in demand is going to be. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where uh, if you've never changed price or if you just promote all the time, don't go all in, right? right? <laughs> it's a great, great for Vegas, right? Don't go all in on your bet. You know, just take a calculated bet, just reel back a little bit and learn from it and then treat that like your investment. Yeah, my, thanks for that. My question was more around how do you then, like, have you had scenarios where then that constant promotion that shows up in the data starts to skew your baselines? Because hmm. we've had that issue. Right. So I work okay. for Staples, and we okay. have, uh, we go through these problems where we have promotions that span like 30, 40 weeks in a year. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that promotion, like, you're only going to drive units at that price. Right. And um, in the baseline, it just it start, you start to see challenges on mm -hmm. where the baseline is constantly lower. Right. Well, I mean, in, this case, in this particular case, each one of those average lines was mm -hmm. looking at each individual set of promotions, uh, products sold underneath that promotion. Mm -hmm. So there was some siloing in, in the baseline. So one, you know, one set of products didn't bleed over into another. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. The... I, you know what, the, the part about, you know what, let, let me talk, let me think about your question a little bit more and get back to it, but it, but it is something like promoting frequently is, and especially if you've, if you've always been on promotion, uh, going off promotion that first time causes a, a lot of confounding issues, so I, yeah, think I, I feel your pain. To piggyback onto that, running promotions too predictably, I think that's when you run into issues, that's what we've seen 
um, with some other lines of business. So with Tableau, we've, we've been able to go very laser focused on specific areas and not have it just be one giant promotion every quarter to where there's pull forwards and everyone's holding off on their orders. Right, yeah. So being, being very nimble and uh, agile in that nature, that's helped us, but we haven't gotten full-blown promotions yet, so. Mm -hmm. question on, uh, you stated before, you know, not as much of a, a call to action, but a call to experiment. Right. Have you utilized R and the predictive capabilities in R to say, well, you know, yeah, we can, we can experiment here, but do you have like a predictive model or some baseline idea if you were to draw back in mm -hmm. your promotions or if you were to increase promotional spending or create some, right. you know, dummy program. You know, that, that's, a, that's a good point. I, tip, in, in this particular case, we did not, but there's, uh, there have been several uh, white papers written up about experimentation, and like in your case, one thing that I would want to see definitely is like products, products and markets, and then a prediction, and at that level, what you would bring back, make the call to R to predict for this product and market whether the, pro the promo was successful and bring that back and then code that up in Tableau so that then you're, you, for instance, either color or shape code it that says, hey, here, and then once you start seeing those groups and patterns of products of whether they worked or not, right, that leads you to better questions or better insight that tells you whether you're going to repeat that experiment again. That's the other thing too, just that, you know, that I, I may have mentioned this, but whenever, part of the caveat is that whenever you use the script function, whatever level of data that you pass into R, that's what's gonna get passed back out, right? So that's why, you know, when I call the script real function and I have the scale, or when I use script real formula and I pass the scale function, if you notice the graphs, they were all time series graphs. So I had every day's value going into R and then bring it back out. And I, the, the thing that I, after we, when we started to come up to round two of this, I was like, okay, well, what if I wanted to pivot up? And that's where I, was, I started saying, well, can I do a level of detail and pass that in? And unfortunately, that's not what the script real function really does. And if I was gonna do this project again, actually, I would probably, uh, I would probably look at using level of detail calculations in a formula and doing the math myself. Rather than, rather than using R. This, but it's just when we did use R in this case, it's because we, we have time series data and we want to see that as quickly as possible. A hey, question about um, running concurrent promotions and you were trying to get to how to determine which one to run mm -hmm. based on cost and so on. Right. When you have two promotions at the same time, how are you determining which one is causing the demand? So, you know, in, in this case, what we saw is that which one's driving the demand, there wasn't a significant, because when, especially in the case where we had two lines right on top of one another, they're driving the, about the same amount of relative demand. Whenever you want to get into optimization, ideally you want to start running into regression and generating coefficients, and those coefficients along with their associated p-values can give you a better idea of, uh, can give you a better idea, especially if you're going to do optimization and run, deciding which promotion to run. So you, the demand that comes in, you're assigning to both? Yes, I mean, yeah, that, that's when the amount of relative demand that both of those are driving, the, the, custom, the, the relative impact that the customers, that you're experiencing from customers buying those products are essentially the same. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Good. much. Thank yep. You.